Telemetry monitoring is a core component of patient care. Advancements in this technology have allowed more nuanced tracking to better identify potential issues earlier. Unfortunately, these advancements have also brought more complex workflows and alarm fatigue, as each new available data point comes with a new alarm. First and foremost, this is an issue of patient safety. Uh, we know that uh, alarm fatigue is much more than a nuisance. It's a threat to our patients. And at a time when they're in the hospital and they're at a critically vulnerable stage uh, with their health, we as physicians need to have fiducial responsibility to our patients to ensure that they are in the safest possible environment and well looked after while well in the hospital. Secondly, we need to ensure that as uh, telemetry monitoring is an important resource for any hospital system, that we as the physicians are custodians of that important resource and we allocate it wisely to the patients that need it most. And we select the patients that are most in need of the monitoring and we defer those patients that don't need it because the ones that don't need it are going to likely generate a large number of inactionable alarms that are going to cloud uh, the system and prevent us from focusing on the true signal of those patients that require our attention. We, in, our, in our initial uh, work that we did at um, Alina Hospital, we started with a brief pilot to make sure that we wanted to put the energy into it to, to um, make sure that the financial and the leadership support and resources were appropriate. And one of our cardiologists did just a real quick chart check and he estimated perhaps 50% of our patients receiving um, remote monitoring on non-cardiac units did not need it at all. Um, they might need SpO2 monitoring instead, or maybe they need uh, entitled CO2 monitoring. So think about what are you really looking for, um, and don't use it unless you need to, unless you're going to act on um, the results. Our organization has really advanced the science of risk stratification so we can understand all of those subtle changes that are happening with our patients so we can hone our attention to those individuals that require our attention first and foremost and corral the resources that we need to, to uh, prevent a, a crisis. And in the preliminary work that we've done, we found that in cases where we divert our emergency response team directly to the bedside, we're able to achieve an unprecedented 93% of return of spontaneous circulation in cardiac arrest, which we're very proud of. I think uh, it, it goes back to what we call as risk stratification. Like, you know, what, who are the people who you're looking for, you know, you're, you have to watch every second while they're in the hospital. So uh, anybody who is, you know, like say post open heart surgery or who has a, just had a heart attack and they had something, a stent put in or something like this, the, the first 48 to 72 hours are very important in terms of, or who somebody who is coming in with uh, multiple passing out spells and un unexpected and we are strongly suspecting a cardiac problem. And so there are specific examples. So there are uh, practice guidelines for preventing um, hospital-acquired pressure ulcers. There are practice standards in place for diabetes management. Um, just as there are practice standards or guidelines in place for these, they also exist for ECG monitoring. So part of the work we're doing um, is to try to help people understand that there are practice standards available for ECG monitoring. And um, we're working together to try to um, increase awareness and help facilities translate these into practice. One of the fastest ways to get practice standards into practice is to put them in order sets, and ideally order sets that are electronic, so that when a provider is, um, is admitting a patient um, and thinks that they need ECG monitoring, that they actually have to select from one of the AHA indications. And then they're able to um, have some guidelines for how long uh, that would be, or duration is the term for that. Offsite monitor watchers need to communicate effectively with the bedside clinicians. Um, so the potential problems with remote monitoring are lack of bedside staff available to answer the phone, uh, potential for phone outage, incorrect phone numbers or phone numbers not updated from the previous shift, and potentially computer downtime. So it's really important when you're thinking about uh, communication from the remote telemetry monitor watchers to the bedside staff that there is closed loop communication. There's a plan for that and there's a backup plan for that. Hospitals need to have protocols that ensure good signal quality, like good preparation of the skin before applying uh, the ECG electrodes to make sure that they adhere well. 
There's some evidence that uh, electrodes should be changed daily or sooner if needed. And also people need to realize that you should not open the packages of electrodes until immediately before you use them, so they need to be stored properly. Also, um, hospitals need to develop a culture of suspending alarms when performing patient care that may result in false alarms. To avoid clinically irrelevant alarms is to customize the alarm settings to the individual patient. So the nurse at the bedside may uh, want to lower the heart rate limit on an athlete who normally has a heart rate of 45, or somebody with chronic atrial fibrillation that's not going to be treated, just turn off that alarm. Nurses need to be customizing alarms. So there needs to be an interprofessional group that decides what the default should be and what nurses can customize because the nurses are the ones who are at that patient's bedside 24 hours a day every minute um, being able to um, understand what alarms are most appropriate for the patient in the context of the communication that they have had with that patient's care providers. In our healthcare organization, which is a large and diverse uh, healthcare system that we have, we've found that off-site central monitoring has a number of advantages. Everything from taking our monitoring caregivers away from the distractions of the normal hospital activities that are occurring, to the standardization of both our staffing to ensure 24-7 coverage, 365 days a year, the standardization of the practices that we're employing to provide care for those patients, and then of course, uh, last and, and, and not least is the quality assurance metrics, the ability to learn and to understand more about the science and explore the problems that our patients are suffering from in the hospital so that we can better recognize the true signals of those patients that require our attention. Our review of our database, the Pennsylvania Patient Safety Reporting System, PA PACERS, has shown an increase in telemetry-related events over the last few years. To address this, we're sharing best practices developed and implemented by Pennsylvania hospitals. These include developing a shared mental model and approaching alarm management from a multidisciplinary perspective, which resulted in a 40% decrease in alarms. Implementation of a consistent battery change schedule, which showed a steep reduction in battery failures and subsequent unmonitored patients and a robust process to ensure continuous monitoring during interdepartmental transfers. Please join us on this journey to raise awareness about telemetry monitoring and provide safe patient care. Together, we can save lives.